Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining this media availability. My name is Catherine Owen. I'm the Deputy City Manager for Communications and Engagement, and I'll be moderating this media availability. Today, we are releasing a number of reports that mark the beginning of the budget update process. These reports outline some proposed changes to the budget for the coming year and describe our plans to confront the financial challenges the pandemic has posed to our organization and to the local economy. These changes will affect how we'll be approaching the work we do as a city, your city. Interim City Manager Adam Laughlin will cover highlights of the reports being released today and what happens next. He'll take questions and our Chief Financial Officer Mary Person is also here to answer your questions as well. One thing to remember is that today is about introducing proposals. This is the first step in a process that will go into December and culminate with our governors, city council, making final decisions. We're going to provide some broad strokes today of what's going to be talked about at council starting next week and we'll provide more updates in the coming weeks as we move through these discussions and next steps. I'll hand it over to our interim city manager to kick things off. Adam. Thanks, Katrin. Uh, thanks uh, for joining us today. As Katrin mentioned, uh, four key financial reports have been released and will be presented to council on uh, what has uh, now been determined uh, time specific uh, as first item on November 18th. Two are updates on the 2020 finances, our capital and operating financial update and two reports set the stage for 2021, and that's our supplementary operating and supplementary capital budget adjustments. First, I want to note that our uh, quarter three operating and capital budget updates indicate that we are on track to end 2020 within budget, despite the financial impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's left us with a $138 million shortfall in our budget. Balancing the budgets uh, was not achieved without sacrifice. Temporary layoffs and the adjustments made to our budget last May made this possible. In the coming weeks, we will provide City Council with further details on the expected financial effects of COVID, which will require one-time adjustments to the city fina City's finances. The support provided by other orders of governments will assist in cushioning those effects. The reports released today also include recommendations for adjustments to our ongoing operating budget to keep 2021 consistent with current levels. In other words, a 0% increase to the tax levy next year. If approved, this would be the lowest tax increase since 1997, which was also a 0% tax increase. I want to highlight it that at this point, our report consists of recommendations only. We are offering recommendations for Council for discussion and consideration. Council will debate these proposals over the next several weeks and hopefully make decisions in mid-December. We are proposing a 0% tax increase because we understand the COVID-19 pandemic has hit our local economy hard and Edmonton businesses and households are facing real financial challenges. We believe that we play a role in making adjustments to our spending just as households and businesses, businesses have had to do. It's important to understand that a 0% tax increase um, actually means a decrease in our operating budget by $64 million. We have proposed 56.5 million in program changes, efficiencies, facility closures, and other reductions, and 7.5 million in other financial strategies. In total, this will bring the city's tax levy to 0%. The proposed budget will mean some service reductions and related staffing reductions. We have made recommendations based on detailed analysis from program and service reviews and a short form priority based budgeting exercise to identify changes that will have the lowest impact to our community. We also factored in responses to motions from City Council regarding facility closures and reduction in supervi supervisory staff. This includes reductions to low use facilities or low use service time periods. In other words, services that require the most subsidies to use. We know that there will be a lot of interest about the reductions and their impacts. 
The executive leadership team hosted an all employee information session today where we shared details of the proposed budget and how we were working to reimagine our way forward. We discussed the difficult choices that are part of our recommendations and committed to keeping them informed throughout the budget adjustment process. We thank Edmontonians for their patience while this important budget adjustment process unfolds. Again, the key dates for the next few weeks of the process are as follows. November 18th, this budget will be presented to Council. December 3rd will be a public hearing for the, for the public to be able to come and share their perspectives on the budget recommendations. On December 9th, we'll provide a COVID-19 2021 financial update and funding strategy report. And then on December 9th and 11th, Council will begin deliberations on the 2021 budget adjustments for both operating and capital. Uh, during the discussion, there will likely be some in-camera components to discuss implications on staff. Council will vote on proposals and, and we hope to have decisions by the end of the year. With that, uh, myself or Mary, our CFO, are available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Adam. We'll take questions from all the reporters who are plugged in today, starting with Vinesh who's in the room. Go ahead, Vinesh, if you're ready. Thank you, yes, Adam. So, uh, 56.5 million in service reductions. Can you give examples of what is being recommended in terms of potential closures or uh, reducing hours? Just some concrete examples, tangible ones that people can wrap, wrap their heads around? Uh, thanks, Vadesh. So the 56.5 million is a combination of uh, revenue increases, expense reductions, uh, closures, and different workforce strategies. Um, you mentioned closures uh, in previous program and service reviews that we've completed. Uh, it identified closures of certain facilities like East Glen and um, Scona Pool. Um, there are others, Oliver. Um, pool, um, uh, Oliver Arena. Um, another program and service review that we identified was the, the asphalt plant that we have, closing that and using um, external uh, asphalt providers. And then in terms of uh, other tangible examples, uh, reducing service levels on um, transit, for example, um, not uh, not eliminating transit or, or eliminating routes, but sort of looking at, at ways that we can reduce uh, service levels. There's also operational efficiencies in terms of how we manage our facilities or fleet and getting uh, the most efficient use of those. And then in terms of workforce strategies, it's looking at our vacancies and, and working through vacancy management and then uh, where there's corresponding service level reductions, uh, adjusting uh, not only the areas that are directly affected by the service level reductions, but um, uh, the, the supporting business areas uh, uh, in terms of staffing complements related to that. So those are some tangible examples. Did you have a follow-up, Pinesh? Yes, please. Uh, so just with that, if I'm reading the report correctly, does the proposal right now suggest 338 fewer FTEs than originally proposed? And then are the, do those FTEs include the supervisory positions as well? Yes, so it identifies uh, over 300 positions, um, and that'll be a combination of vacancy management and unfortunately layoffs. And included in that is um, the response to the, the previous motion uh, based on the auditor's work related to supervisory and mid-level, middle management, sorry. Um, and of that, I believe there's 108 uh, positions that are in that category. So it's not in addition to, it's part of. We'll go next to Dustin. Dustin Cook from the Journal. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, for Adam, I think building off of those questions, the report highlights 13.2 million in savings and service level reductions. Is that, you know, as you mentioned, transit um, reductions, but transit right now is operating at normal level. And so is this service level reduction for what's currently being operated, including rec centers, so there will be no more rec centers opening next year, or will these be further reductions that are recommended? Thanks, Dustin. This is where it gets a bit complicated. Um, the COVID report that I mentioned that would be coming on December 7th are, is a report that really identifies the one-time adjustments that we have to make as a result of the pandemic. So 
In my speaking notes, I mentioned this year it was 138 million of reductions that we needed to make. We'll have to go through a similar exercise for 2021, but the discussion that council will have on December 9th and 11th, what we'll present on the uh, 18th of November, is about the ongoing um, reductions that we're recommending. And that's, um, that's permanent reductions, whereas you know, service level adjustments to rec centers and transit that we made this year, those are one time. So um, we'll have to go through a similar exercise in 2021 in terms of one time reductions as a result of the, the pandemic, but the discussion on December 9th and 11th are more longer term decisions in terms of reductions. Um, so, so whenever we're talking about, for example, a closure of a facility, that's a longer term um, decision that's being made on December 9th and 11th. Whereas a temporary closure is more related to the pandemic or a, or a, um, a temporary reduction in transit service more related to the pandemic and a permanent reduction in service is more related to the ongoing. Dustin, did you have a follow up to that? I do, thank you. On the um, uh, supervisory positions and workforce strategies, uh, so 108.3 uh, uh, supervisory FTE positions uh, have been reduced. Has that been since September and since that audit report? And are those reductions included in that 18.2 million workforce strategies uh, laid out? Uh, so the 108 that are identified in the report uh, are still subject to council approving the, the associated reductions. Some of that 108 do include positions that have been previously identified. Um, and I believe we mentioned that uh, during the auditor discussion. Uh, I think the number was around 16 positions that were included previously. Um, so this is all subject to the debate and discussion at council. and. Should council approve all of our recommendations, the 108 is a combination of uh, previous positions that have been eliminated in that, um, in that stream uh, as defined by the auditor, uh, vacancies that we currently have, uh, and unfortunately, uh, some individuals will have to be uh, laid off if council approves the, the recommendations. So it's a combination of, of vacancies, previous reductions, and um, staff layoffs if approved by council. And just to be clear, Adam, it is included in that 13 point something million, correct? Uh, exactly where it fits depends on exactly uh, what strategy we're talking about. So if we're talking about a, a, a service level reduction, there may be positions that are included in that stream. If we're talking about workforce strategies, it, it could be in that stream. So it all depends on what those positions are directly tied to in terms of the reduction scenarios. Thanks for that clarification. And Natasha Reed with the CBC, thanks for your patience. You're next. Hi, thank you. Yeah, I just need to clarify this for the purposes of reporting accurately um, because I'm not, when you say 300 positions and I think, Adam, you said that would include some layoffs and vacancies and whatnot, is that just for 2021? Um. That is for the ongoing budget decisions that council uh, would make. Um, as I mentioned previously, as a result of the pandemic, we've had to do temporary uh, layoffs. Um, the numbers, um, I believe for, for you know, the city of Edmonton organization proper, when you exclude libraries and, and explore Edmonton, I think we were around 2000 that were temporarily laid off. Um, the 338 are ongoing reductions or permanent reductions. Um, the other layoffs that we've had to uh, advance are temporary and those will still need to be considered on the basis of the pandemic. So I hope that clarifies uh, for you, Natasha. Okay, and so the 338, uh, how many of those would be layoffs? like straight layoffs and not the vacancies management, but just straight layoffs? Um, I'm, I, I think for reasons of sort of protecting our employees and ensuring that we don't um, disclose something that could impact their um, livelihood, we're, we're not permitted to disclose that yet. Uh, there will be some 
in private discussions related to that and uh, following the, uh, the budget discussion and council's decision on what they approve for recommendations, we'll be in a better position to share that uh, proportion uh, or that split between uh, vacancies uh, and uh, people in positions. Last call for, for questions from anyone who's present before we wrap it up. Just confirmation, uh, December 3rd, public hearing? Yes, December 3rd, public hearing. So November 18th, administration presents the capital and operating budget adjustments. Council will have uh, one round of questions. Uh, it'll then just basically be paused. It'll go to the public hearing on December 3rd. Hopefully we can get through December 3rd and then um, uh, in, sorry, in one day. And then uh, the actual council deliberations will start on December 9th and there's two days set aside, December 9th and December 11th. Uh, at this time, there's no other dates booked. So if council is not done on December 11th, they'll have to choose whether they continue this year or pick it up next year. Anything more from Natasha oh. or Dustin? I don't hear anything. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Really appreciate it. We'll keep you posted on these important conversations about city finances, programs, and services yeah, as the budget continues. Uh, Natasha, were you trying to get in with the last question? Yes, please. Sorry, go Thanks. ahead. Oh, that's okay. Uh, just another follow-up on the service reductions. I know, uh, Adam, you, met, you mentioned transit. Um, is that the area with the biggest service reductions that we'll notice and will that be routes or mainly uh, hours of operation? Just looking at Mary. Just getting a little bit of and, and what other services can you point out that we might see the most, um, we might notice the most changes? Uh, there's a number of service reductions, if I could call them, uh, as back of house. So on our facility uh, and fleet management side. Um, in, in terms of the transit service reductions, I believe it's not significant. It's, it's off-peak reductions in terms of service. Um, so it's not... Uh, jeopardizing our implementation of the bus network redesign, but it's more sort of around the edges of the off-peak services where ridership is low. Um, so facilities, some fleets, um, there are, you know, corresponding to the facility closures, there are corresponding or recommendations of closures, there's corresponding support services that are provided to, to those areas in terms of financial support and, and, and HR support and communications and engagement support. Um, so those are, those are some of the uh, types of service reductions. Um, uh, I, I, I think uh, once you have a chance to go through the budget document, there's, there's many different um, services that we've identified. And again, it'll be subject to council's comfort level with those reductions. Um, Based on uh, based on our current environment and and how they want to um, see the city moving forward over the next year, future years. Thank you. As you comb through those budget reports, we're more than happy to answer any specific questions that you might have. So please put those to our media relations unit, and they will ensure that you get a prompt response. Thanks for being with us. We'll keep you posted on further budget discussions as they uh, unfold. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.